And so, he's so nosy. Am I supposed to not see? Is this live? Yeah, no, I'm not live. I'm recording. Are you recording the video? Yeah. Blooper reel? Yeah, pretty much. This is on blooper? No, go away. This is on blooper. Now, see, this is me doing this to you. You be. You know what? You're right. I'm on a call. I am on a call. I am on a call. I'm sorry. Mm hmm. Bye, sir. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so we just uh, wanted to utilize the entire space since we did have a formal dining area. And then um, having an island kind of gave, gave us that um, eat-in kitchen vibe, right? So I only have one. So it's a U-shaped kitchen with the countertops around the perimeter and then the island in the middle. Now, when you have that layout, the most important thing that I did when I was about to get actually IKEA kitchen ca cabinets, um, I worked with the IKEA kitchen designer, um, which was very helpful, even though I did not go with IKEA kitchen cabinets. My uh, contractor got our cabinets for us and they were actually just as affordable. So I'm not mad, but you know, do you? I had never designed a kitchen before and IKEA kitchen designers, they would design kitchens for hundreds, thousands of people. So they were going to have a lot more tips and advice. And her um, biggest thing was the kitchen triangle, which I already had done research on prior to, but I have, was about to go off and not do that. Uh, because my husband, sir, was adamant about having the sink in front of the window, but the stove was right next to the window and was only going to live this much space. So that triangle, and I'll have a picture of what the triangle, what I'm talking about, the kitchen flow triangle. You should have a triangle shape between your refrigerator, your stove, and your sink. And it should work in a triangle, whether it be, you know, obtuse. You know, I wasn't good at geometry, but I don't know all the shapes. It should be a, have a good flow. So we were honestly going to make the mistake of like, you know, my husband really doesn't want the sink in the island. I'm just going to leave it by the window. And she was like, okay, honey, I had a kitchen like this. And you are going to absolutely hate the flow when you have your sink directly next to your stove and your refrigerator right there. And I was just like... Uh, she was going to be absolutely right because that it was just going to be one weird line like the stove the sink with two inches in between it and then you come around the side and the, there was a refrigerator so i heeded her warning <laughs> and i said i went back to my husband i was like sir tough nugget you know what i'm saying like this sink is gonna go in the island and so therefore my sink was in the island across that on the back perimeter was my stove is going to be my stove and on the end of the kitchen will be the refrigerator so it's a nice triangle great flow and that's something that you want to look up when you're doing your um your design layout making sure that you have the kitchen triangle from your stove to your refrigerator to your sink back to your stove so the other thing that i researched a lot were the pros and cons to every single detail that goes into a kitchen i'm been saying like the pros and cons between having hardwood floors versus laminate in your kitchen versus um, or not not just hardwood, um, bamboo, which we ended up getting bamboo because it was a compromise. Sir wanted hardwood. I almost passed out because that's a whole nother thing. A whole other conversation. I even thought about um, pot fillers versus no pot filler. I actually, I actually opted out of a pot filler since my stove was directly across from my sink. Um, and I read the pros and cons of like, sometimes if you don't use it, the water just sits in the pipe. And then when you turn it on, that's it. That stuff that sits in the pipe is in your food. And I was like, uh, it's just a kind of a bougie looking thing to have. <laughs> and, you know, then at the end, when you're done cooking, you still got to pick the pot up and pour it in the sink. So eh, I opted out for it. But I did that research to make sure that it was something that I I was okay with not having because if I put it in and then later I thought it was stupid just because I didn't do my research about it. I did my research about um, different types of backsplash, whether I wanted marble, which whether I wanted ceramic or porcelain, uh, quartz countertops versus laminate versus butcher block. What are the pros and cons, the maintenance? Like, and that is, child, when I say if you are a maintenance-free family, then you need to go with maintenance stuff, butcher block, all these certain things, marble, they stain. Look it up. If you are okay with oiling and babying your kitchen, I am not. I want to spray, wipe it, walk away. Like that's my me and my family and what we can mentally process, right? So yeah, look up everything. I even looked up um, plumbing costs. Like before, one of the reasons why I was afraid to move the sink into the aisles because is it going to be more expensive? I looked it up. The 
the cost, the process of moving your sink to another side of your room or moving into an island. Um, so everything, pros and cons to every single little thing. Um, and then that helps you make the decision um, when some someone can, a professional out there on the internet or someone who's just experienced the the con or the pro can tell you straight up like, hey, this is my experience. Now you can make a better decision if it works for you and your family. So here are also a few uh, common sense kitchen layout tips, just a few. There are probably a lot more on the internet, but these are the ones that effectively help me make my decisions and hopefully they help you make your decisions when you're planning out your kitchen. So ultimately you always want your dishwasher next to your sink. I think I almost made the mistake of not putting my dishwasher <laughs> next to my sink, but it's almost like a common sense thing. You want to stuff your dishes and then you want to load your dishwasher right away. So whether your sink is going to be in your island or on the perimeter near a window, make sure that your dishwasher is right next to it. And plus plumbing is right there for the sink um, and the dishwasher where the water is going to run, of course, right? Um, something that is uh, really new. Well, not new. I won't say that. It's not new. But pullouts. A lot of people like, who live, like, live in um, apartments are used to having like their garbage cans out taking up floor space and that is something that we have we're currently or living with for the last four years and absolutely drove me crazy when people would move the garbage can <laughs> around the kitchen and so i felt like sometimes i'd have like stuff in my hand i want to throw away and i know i'll cross half across the christian kitchen just to throw it away so my new kitchen will have a pull out i know the garbage can will be next to my sink so once again, you can scrape off food in the garbage can, rinse it off, and then load the dishwasher. And it's all in this one area. You're not walking around, bumping into other things and ha dripping stuff on the floor. It's just a pet peeve, but that's another one. If you are going to put your sink and your stove next to each other, you want to have at least 12 inches of space between the stove and the sink. So you should at least be able to put a drawer in between, drawer space pull out or cabinet, pull cabinet between um, your sink and your stove. That way you have a solid surface on this side, a solid surface on this side to place items if you're cooking or doing dishes. And this is a one tip that the Ikea designer gave me was that when you're doing your countertops, you the way they cut the marble or quartz or whatever you're getting, you don't want the run of your countertops to just stop at like this two inch little, you know, ant, like ant, just stop, you know? And then it's your stove. So then you have like this little two inch space, then your sink, and then the rest of your beautiful room. And then the way they cut it, it's just gonna look weird. Another one was 36 inches walking space all around your island. If you have an island, um, you wanna make sure that you have enough space to walk around your island. If you have a peninsula, um, sometimes if it, you might have more space in the center of your kitchen, but that space between, you know, maybe the refrigerator or the peninsula or your wall in the peninsula might need, should be a minimum 36 inches. So those are some uh, mistakes that a lot of people make not having enough space because then you, you put your island, you set your island and then you open your refrigerator and then your refrigerator is hitting your island. So here is the kind of final layout that my contractor came up with for our kitchen. And I absolutely love it. It's something that, um, you know, I had already had in my mind as we were going to do, but it's kind of cool to kind of see it laid out in this like 3D realm way um, and the actual, you know, look of how it's going to be. Um, well, not how it's going to be, but how it's going to be laid out. This is about laying out. So as far as the styling um, that we're going for, just, you know, clean, minimalistic, nothing too crazy. I am trying to be a little bit more bold with my countertop situation. But like I said, that's a whole new video as far as when it comes to styling and the look. But I hope that I can help uh, helped you with your decision, um, you know, from the beginning to the end to design. Um, it was helpful for me. I didn't really have many people who had uh, redone their kitchens, but I'm glad I talked to a couple people, uh, professionals who, who've done kitchens for many of people with different tastes. And I hope that this video helps you um, because once you knock a hole in the wall, you gotta kind of finish now. So, <laughs> um, but thanks for watching the video. Uh, stay with us on this journey. So far, so good. And I'll see you later. Peace.